Hello, my dear steer YouTube channel viewers. This is Dr. Palni Raman from Professor OK Amdekar and team. Today's topic for discussion is clinical evaluation of scrotal swelling. Why this topic is given so much important? There is an old adage saying acute painful scrotal swelling is torsion testis unless proven otherwise. This is the golden statement given by past generation professor of surgery and pediatric surgery. Unless diagnosed early and managed appropriately which will lead to testicular loss. That is the importance of this condition. In clinical practice when one come across a swelling of the scrotum, the first and foremost thing is to rule out torsion testis. What is the classical presentation of torsion testis? Usually, they present with abrupt or sudden onset of pain in the scrotum, which can radiate to the right iliac fossa too, along with the nausea and vomiting. And on examination, there is a high riding testis or a transverse lie of the testis with erythema, tenderness and swelling and loss of the cremastric reflex. These are the classical signs. When you come across these classical signs, immediately you should refer to a pediatric surgeon without any delay. But when you are not confident about the diagnosis or it has presentation is not classical or diagnosis is equivocal, we should think about the other diagnosis like torsion testicular appendix or epididymo architis. How to go about? You have to look back at the basics that is history, clinical examination and ancillary investigations. Coming to the history, first and foremost is the age. Which condition is most prevalent at which age? For example, torsion testis is more common in the neonates and pubertal age, whereas testicular appendix torsion is common in the pre-pubertal age that is 7 to 12 years, whereas epididymo architis is most common in the post-pubertal age as well as in younger age up to 1 to 2 years when UTI is common along with the urogenital anomalies. So one condition is pubertal, the other is pre-pubertal, the other one is post-pubertal. We should understand this. Coming to the onset, duration and progress will give a lot of clue. Sudden and abrupt onset and presenting to you within 6 to 12 hours, mostly it is a torsion testis. Also, if it is an acute onset, but it is presenting after 12 hours, because of the severity is not like torsion testis, it can be a torsion appendix testis. Or if the onset is gradual, and usually if the patient is presenting after a period of 24 hours to 48 hours, it is mostly you are dealing with the epididymo architis. Coming to the history of trauma, which is very important. Because children are more prone for trauma, testicular trauma, and usually the pain is short-lived. If there is a persistent pain more than 20, more than 24 hours or more than few hours, you should always think there is something underlying testicular injury or testicular laceration or hematocele or underlying torsion testis. So, persistent pain following trauma is a red flag. Past history. Past history of similar episodes of sudden episodes of testicular pain and relieved within 48 hours can be a history of recurrent torsion. Okay. What about examination? In the general condition of the patient, particularly a torsion testis, he will be looking uncomfortable and he will be miserable. Compared to the other condition, they will be reasonably comfortable. 
on examination of the abdomen and genitals you have to examine the abdomen also because sometimes it can be a referred pain from the like for example renal colic with the pain in the testis or sometimes appendix with the pain in the testis you have to examine the abdomen also when you examine the genitals when there is a diffuse swelling tender swelling and redness and and the patient is not allowing you to touch and there is loss of the chromatic reflex it indicates torsion testis if there is a localized swelling in the anterior part of the scrotum and there is a tender nodule and there is a blue dot sign which is mainly due to the infarction of the testicular appendage it indicates mostly you are dealing with a torsion appendix or a generalized testicular swelling along with the erythema and tenderness and the pain reduces on lifting that scrotum it indicates mostly you are dealing with the epididymo arthritis but usually chromatic reflex is present in both this condition that is torsion appendix testis as well as epididymo arthritis so this is the clinical examination findings so when you are not able to come to a conclusion even after the history and clinical examination one should look up on the investigations two important investigation are one is urine examination for pyuria if there is a pyuria the chances of uti with urogenital anomalies with epididymitis is more and number two is the color doppler and color doppler mainly showing increased vascularity or a normal vascularity almost rules out torsion testis whereas in case of torsion appendix testis and epididymo arthritis it will be normal or increased vascularity but there is a caveat mainly the color doppler is an observer dependent it is not full proof and it should be an not be a substitute for the clinical diagnosis it should be only an add on always your clinical evaluation is more superior than the ultrasonologic evaluation of the scrotal swelling again i have forgotten to mainly importantly stress upon another important painful condition which occurs in in children that is incarcerated inguinal hernia which can present inguinal her, inguinoscrotal swelling and with nausea and vomiting but there will be inguinal swelling also particularly in infants another important condition is in adults is necrotizing fasciitis or fornius gangrene which one should never miss in adults particularly when they present with sudden or abrupt onset of pain along with the fever along with the hypotension along with the rapidly spreading swelling in the scrotum along with the blisters and and the patient is deteriorating fast with the history of diabetes one should always rule out fornius gangrene in adults okay now let us have a simplified approach for a scrotal swelling scrotal swelling can be simplified approach in the form of painful swelling and painless swelling when it comes to painful swelling acute painful swelling as i have already told torsion testis torsion appendix testis epididymo arthritis incarcerated hernia and and particularly fornius gangrene in in adults and i have already clearly explained how to differentiate now coming to painless scrotal swelling how to come across the common causes are hydrocil varicocil testicular tumor and you can have a scrotal idiopathic scrotal edema or allergic edema how to differentiate usually they are painless which in case of hydrocil mainly in infants it is a soft fluctuant swelling and transalimination is positive whereas in varicocele which occurs in mainly in the adolescents usually there is a later, left side is the commonly involved there is a bag of worms feeling while palpating the spermatic cord bag of worms palpating the spermatic cord whereas in case of testicular tumor it will be firm to hard in nature and coming to the allergic etiology usually history of bites following by diffuse swelling of the bilateral scrotum and extending into the inguinal region with itching usually indicates an allergic etiology sometimes if there is no itching it indicates idiopathic scrotal edema which commonly occurs in 5 to 10 years and which is also self limiting which recurs in 3 to 5 days mainly in a healthy child if there is a diffuse swelling and extending into the inguinal region 
and with or without itching, mostly it is an idiopathic scrotal edema. Now, okay, I have clearly, clearly told how to clinically approach. What is the peculiarity about neonatal torsion? Because I have already told torsion is common in neonates too. Peculiarity is the presentation is not acute and painful like an in a older age presentation. Usually it is sometimes painless only when you see there is a heart swelling. Why it is important? Because the pediatric surgeon will explore and fix the contralateral testes. Otherwise, when both testes are involved, it can lead to fertility issues. That is the importance of neonatal torsion. The torsion would have happened antenatally or natally or postnatally. So, why commonly the torsion testis is missed in practice? Number one, adolescent boys are very reluctant or shy to expose the genitals and usually they tell the pain only in the right iliac fissa, the referred pain they refer to the surgeons or the physicians, they won't expose the genitals and lead to misdiagnosis. Number two, when a cursory examination is done of the scrotum or the clinic history, cursory history is taken, it is often missed. Number three, over reliance on the investigation like ultrasonology can lead to missed diagnosis of torsion testis. Number four, when you are junior in the career and we have not seen much of the cases, you are more to miss the torsion testis. These are the reasons for missing the torsion testis. Coming to the management after diagnostic approach, it's quite simple. With respect to torsion testis and incarcerated inguinal hernia, refer to pediatric surgeon immediately without any delay. Why? Because exploration of the scrotum within 6 to 12 hours, the testis can be salvaged 100%, nearly 100%. If it is beyond 24 hours, the salvageability is very poor. With respect to other conditions, they can be managed medically or conservatively. With respect to fourneous gangrene, it is a team approach. Coming to the carry on message, acute painful scrotum is torsion testis unless proven otherwise. Failure to exclude torsion testis or failure to reach an alternate diagnosis, one should immediately refer to a surgeon without delaying by unnecessary investigations. Investigations add little. Diagnosis is clinical, clinical, clinical. Thank you one and all.